Welcome to episode 38 at Meet the Voter, meetthevoter.com. On today's episode, we'll be interviewing Michael Jack. Michael is the acting chairman of the Republican Central Committee of Washaw County, featured speaker at the Republican Men's Club of Northern Nevada's monthly luncheon on the 18th of April at the Atlantis, and he'll be speaking on the fair tax. So we hope to see you there. Tickets are only $20. Plus, our U.S. Senator Dean Heller will be there and speaking for a few minutes, and he will be around to, I believe, answer some questions. So without further ado, let's get right into this conversation with Michael Jack, and we'll see you on the 18th at the Atlantis. Well, thank you for uh, having me on. And first of all, uh, I will be wearing a different hat at the meeting. I won't be talking about the Republican Party or any of that sort of stuff. I am also the state director for Americans for Taxation, and we are sponsoring the Fair Tax Act, which is in Congress right now. And uh, in the House of Representatives is H.R. 25. And so I will be giving uh, everybody a rundown on what that's all about and why we should uh, have our Congress people co-sponsoring this bill. Very good. So what is it all about? It's, I guess it's a federal tax. I didn't realize that. Yes, it is. The Fair Tax Act uh, has been around for a while. And what it does, it's a tax reform bill. You know, like you've heard about the flat tax and some of the other tax reform bills. This is the most comprehensive, but it's also the the simplest tax reform act that has been proposed, and it is also has the biggest support. There are over 80 co-sponsors for this bill from both parties, coming from both the House and the Senate. There isn't any other tax reform uh, presentation or bill out there that comes even close to that. But basically what it does is it does away with the Internal Revenue Service. It does away with the Internal Revenue Code. It does away with the income tax altogether because the income tax is a, is a negative. Um, the income tax takes away from production, takes away from people, doesn't add to anything. And eventually it would do away with the 16th Amendment, which brought about the income tax to begin with. And it would replace it with a national sales tax that's been modified to ensure that the poor are protected. Because the sales tax by itself, like the sales taxes we have here in, uh, in Nevada, are regressive. And so they, the poor are hurt exponentially more than you know, middle class or wealthy folks are. So there are provisions within the fair tax to ensure that that doesn't happen. The, uh, that part of it, which is uh, probably the best part for most people, is called the prebate. And what it does is, you know, how the uh, federal government every, every year will set or establish the poverty levels based on income. Well, we would take, with a fair tax, we would do the same thing, except it's not based on income, it's based on consumption. The levels are going to be the same. So, for example, a family of four the uh, poverty level for a family of four is roughly $30,000 a year. The fair tax is set at 23%, and there's a whole lot of reasons for that, which I don't have the time to go into. But basically, it, when you compare it to the impact of the in- income tax, there's only about a 1% or 2% difference. What they do with the prebate is they take that $30,000 a year, and they assume that that is going to be all spent on necessities, and they figure out how much you would pay in taxes under the fair tax at 23%, which runs around $6,000 a year. And they divide that by 12. And at the beginning of each month, you would get a check for just under $600 a month sent to you. So you're being paid back in advance for what you, you would spend on, uh, you know, on taxes up to your consumption level. Above that, above that level, you're going to be paying the same amount of taxes as everybody else. So if you are consuming below that level, you're not going to pay any taxes at all. You're actually going to make a little bit of money. If you're consuming above that level, at that level, you'd pay zero taxes. Above that level, you would still get the benefits of the prebate coming to you up to that $30,000 level. Then above that, you'd be paying the full amount, as I said before. So it's kind of a sliding scale to the point where you get up to about $220,000 in consumption a year, and you're paying almost 23%, like 22.8% of uh, in taxes. Would you still have so W-2s the, uh, and 1099s? Nope. All that goes away. 
You don't have to file anything. The taxes are collected at the point of sale. The taxes are on everything that's new, all new sales, like a new car, new food, whatever, and on all services. If you're buying a used car, you're not going to pay any taxes on it. You're buying a a pre-owned home, you're not going to pay any taxes on it, but you will on a new one. And the idea behind that is all taxes are paid by the end user. Businesses don't pay taxes now. It's a pass-through. When they're figuring out what their pricing is going to be, they include the tax expense in their expense calculations when they're uh, trying to figure out how much they want to have as their bottom line, but what percentage, like Walmart, they, they have about a 3% net profit after taxes. Well, they're still going to want to have that 3%. So they're going to take into account their taxes and everything else, labor and everything else is their expense. And then they're going to price their goods at a level where they're still going to make that 3%. So we're paying everybody's taxes anyway. Right, right. And I know the biggest benefit, the biggest benefit I can see too would be our ability to compete overseas and in other places in the world because we wouldn't have the added added expenses at all levels when we're manufacturing. Well, yeah, that's true too. That's another benefit of it is you have what's known as embedded taxes and those and fees. So the cost, it costs somewhere, the estimates run between 600 billion and almost a trillion dollars every year, just preparing our taxes and complying with the tax codes, not necessarily paying them. All that goes away because we won't have to go through that drill of preparing or complying with the tax code. So that, that cost gets passed through to us in, the, in our prices of, you know, cost of goods and all that sort of thing. So that goes away. Not only that, you don't have to be, the fair tax covers your um, payroll taxes. So the money that goes to Medicare and Social Security comes out of that 23% tax. Oh, wow. I was going to ask about that. There's a lot of details. So it's Atlantis a Hotel and Casino in Reno, Nevada on the 18th of April. Doors open at 11. Uh, Dean Heller is speaking about 12. So I guess you'll speak after him. No, I think I'm going before him. Before him. Okay. Well, it sounds, sounds really good. That's going to be a good meeting. That's for sure. And congratulations, I guess, on being the acting chairman of the Republican Central Committee for Washoe County here in Northern Nevada. Well, our, our elections are the 27th of next month and the new regime, if I'm not reelected, will be taking over in May. Well, well good May. luck. How's the competition out there? Uh, the competition's always good, but that's a good thing, right? Well, Michael, <laughs> thank you. And we'll have you back up on a timeline for folks that don't know. I know you've done a lot of different careers. You were um, uh, you started out somewhere as a sheriff's deputy, I think Air National Guard, and I know that you were in the FBI. Is that right? 21 years. Yeah, that's good. That's well, correct. Thanks for your service. Well, take care. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me on. I look forward to uh, April 18th being able to make the presentation and hopefully doing more in the future. Sounds good. So everyone, uh, make sure you buy your tickets. It's only $20 for lunch. It's a good lunch and good speakers. Couple details about the luncheon. First time guests are only ten dollars. Students under twenty six are five dollars. And doors open at eleven. It will be at the Atlantis Casino and Hotel on Virginia Boulevard on the eighteenth of April. And you can buy your tickets in advance by going to the Republican Men's Club dot org. That's Republican Men's Club dot org. If you're listening right now on YouTube, go ahead and hit the little round circle right here. On a podcast, go ahead and subscribe through iTunes and give us a rating and review. Definitely appreciate it. In both cases, it really helps with building momentum, as you can see with the number of downloads. One of our recent luncheons had over 3,400 views. That's pretty good. So congratulations.